Hello, Watchman here, welcome back to more Neko and Seagull's Cry. Um, first of all, what? Because this, and yes, we have seen a walking cannon. What? Uh, spiders are your natural enemy? Is he an insect? I don't know. Um, while I was editing the previous part, uh, what was it? Yeah, I, for quite a while, um, because I was thinking, yeah, I'm gonna get a thumbnail for, uh, uh cannon being something. And for quite a while, I'm just like skimming through the previous recording. I couldn't see him at all. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess they didn't show any pictures of him. That's odd. Um, maybe I'll go try to um, find something else, and then I did actually find kind of. But yeah, uh, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, can, what uh, Shannon's not telling everyone is that Cannon's actually uh, have got a fair view of spiders. Huh? When Shannon brought that handkerchief close to the cannon's fire, something happened in an instant. It all happened at once. The human eye couldn't have followed it. Cannon jumped like a wild goat, fleeing from the thing Shannon was holding. Then, from his arm, some kind of afterglow glow flashed purple and drew a curve through space. That arc, which drew three beautiful purple curves, traced across the throats of Nanjo and Kumasawa, who had been tending to him. And, in an instant, Nanjo and Kumasawa's throats opened like gaping, gaping mouths, and then the blood really started spewing out. The third purple curve should have traced across Shannon's throat, but Shannon wasn't there. Uh, because Genji, who had been behind her, had wrapped his own arm around Shannon's neck and pulled her back. This all happened in an instant. <laughs> In the instant it took Gorda to think fast in an attempt to understand the scene, the frozen moment in time shattered. Blood was gushing from Ranjo and Kumasawa's torn open necks. Cannon jumped and kicked off the picture frame which had been hanging from the wall behind him, springing forward just like a cat and aiming for Shannon's throat again. Um. Hmm. So yeah, going back to the um, sheep and wolf puzzle, uh, what if in the, this example uh, the wolf can't kill in front of... Uh, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 people. 9. 7, 8, 9 people. But can kill in front of... Uh, for other people. Uh, now, uh, you've given them the possibility to kill the four other people in that group, and then join your group and kill all four of you. And that's all your fault, uh, Rosa. Right, that reminds me, um, so there was a comment uh, last episode asking who I thought. Uh, so, last episode being uh, part 24. Um, yeah, who I thought the killer currently is. Um, can you remember what I replied? But, um, basically, I think pointing at Beatrice for human Beatrice is too obvious. Um, So I feel like it isn't actually her. I do feel like it might change. Might be changing each uh, round we go through. Um, and with Rosa... 
I feel like that's also too obvious. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about uh, the past part where um, Cannon is blaming Rosa. I don't know how to factor that in yet. Um, maybe they're just trying to bust Rosa? Um, the goal is to... Maybe the goal is to um, clear suspicion from Rosa by making it seem like they're on opposite teams and then revealing that they are on the killer's side. Um, but yeah, so with Rosa we were shown the golden butterfly landing on her back. So that kind of feels like it might be a red herring. On the other hand, she keeps acting way too suspicious, with far too much confidence, and two well-reasoned out explanations each time. At the very least, I don't think she's acting with the survivor's best interests in mind. Um, I had one theory that the golden butterfly might be creating a conspirator, um, without them actually being the killer. Um, so like how in One Night Werewolf you have the minion aiding the werewolves without being a werewolf himself. Um, yeah. That's kind of where my thoughts currently are, at least. But I am not sure where we'll be after this part. And jumped and kicked off a picture frame of me hanging from the wall behind me. Yeah, spring forward just like a cat and aiming for Shannon's throat again. Cannon's target once again disappeared from in front of him. Specifically aiming for Shannon, why? Why not uh, the others, Genji and Gorda? Uh, because Genji had pulled Shannon again, and the two of them had fallen to the ground in a defensive crouch. God is about to die. Even God was no fool. Even if he couldn't fully understand what was going on. He at least realized that if this cannon wasn't seized, his own life would also be in peril. He sprung at cannon with his huge body, pushing him up against the wall with all his weight and physical strength. <laughs> Another purple curve was drawn from the tips of the fingers on Cannon's right hand. And then, and when he raised that hand like a sword, in the goddess back, there was a loud thunk, because Cannon's raised hand had been pinned to the wall. He couldn't tear his palm away from the wall. Sticking out from it was a knife Genji had thrown. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, it would have been surprising to see someone as old as Genji handle a knife so skillfully. But in this abnormal space, no one paid it much mind. Genji, -sama, kore wo... mm. Genji took the handkerchief with a spiderweb stuck to it from Shannon, and he approached Cannon, who was pinned to the wall by Goda's massive body and the knife. Yamero. <laughs> Poor arachnophobic cannon. Uh, <laughs> what? Ninji pushed her handkerchief up against cannon's face. There was a sound like setting meat, like setting meat on a red hot iron plate. Of course, the smell was the same too. As he was horribly burned, festering in filthy red and black, and crying out in his death throes, Han's body burst open and scattered. It was almost as though a balloon filled with gold leaf had popped. The entire servant room was completely buried under a storm of gold leaf. No cloud of gold butterflies. Yeah, I guess butterflies could be scared of uh, spiders. Those butterflies began to softly fade as they went into water, or rather, into the empty air itself. And afterwards, all that was left was the three survivors sitting on their butts, stained with blood. However, not everyone was merely stained with blood. 
some of them were lying on the ground, spurting out blood themselves. Slit so sharp they looked like they'd cut your finger if you touched them, opened wide, and large amounts of blood kept pouring out. <笑>ベアトリーチェ。ゴダ。怪我はないか。私は大丈夫です。しかし私は<笑><笑> 何があったのか理解できない! And very conveniently not leaving any evidence behind of uh, his existence there. Oh, uh, oh. That's right, that's what the reason for saying it was Rosa was for. To make it so that they wouldn't uh, bring her there. Ah. Goda looked at his own hand. The bright red blood left from his scuffle with Cannon definitely remained. And yet, Cannon was nowhere to be seen. Because he had disappeared. Again. He had transformed into gold butterflies and scattered. Goddess kept screaming alone without a clue about what was going on. Shannon sobbed in front of Nanjo's and Kumasawa's remains. As Genji watched over her, silent as always. Yeah, so, um, oof, <laughs> we're getting close to the end, um, and it's only 17 past one, and Devil's Proof is chucked up. Uh, so, I'm gonna guess then that they show the Devil to give the Devil's Proof. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um, actually, let's see. Have I updated yet? Because I'm going to guess that Human Battle didn't get to see those deaths. Yes. So, Kumasachi died on the seventh room, her throat slit by a sharp blade or something similar. Finishing touches yet to come. The, uh. Dagger thingy. Um, actually, let's check. What were the orders again? Uh, in tips. Couch your head and kill, couch your chest and kill. Um, I don't think we've had anyone else. Back to the characters. Um, six, lovers, chest and head will be. Died in the servant room, his throat slit by a sharp blade or something similar. But this alone isn't enough. His chest, something. Uh, no change there. No change there. And that. Right, because there is no corpse, that's why it's completely dark. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> シャロン。無事でよかった。君に何かあったら僕は。庄司様。庄司君少し静かにして。あなたたちの目の前で殺人が行われたんでしょ。ああ、そしてしかし、who Yes and no. Minai no. So, so it got so no. Nanto sets me silly by Inoka. Gentisan. What a study. Mitamono Umak sets me dekimas. Tascani sono. So you are what I study no meno mite and Okorimasta. What does you know meno mite? Hm. Dakeredo. Areva sono. 
何だったんだ私にもわからないです何を言ってるの He's saying that he doesn't understand. Clearly, you haven't been listening. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. Yes and no. I'm not going to be able to do this. It was an it. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. Is this a singular or a collective? Hmm. Or. Yeah. And yeah, it's also possible they could have been killed without uh, seeing what happened. Like some kind of remote mechanism. Okay. I am looking forward to the red text on this one. Dr. Nanjo and Kamasasan had been killed. We understood that much. And it seems that this just occurred in front of these people's eyes. But even so, they spoke awkwardly. They admitted they, that they had definitely seen the crime with their own eyes. But when asked to explain what they had seen, her mouth went suddenly shut. I couldn't understand why Aunt Liz was irritated and flaring up. <laughs> Is she going to mention anything about the spiders? But... It was something with the appearance of canon, but it was not canon. そう、そうです。勝手口に誰かがやってきたんです。そして誰だろうと私は扉を開けました。勝手口に誰か。それは誰？ さいごまで言わせてやれ。それから。そいつは血まみれで大怪我をしていました。私たちは使用に必須に運び、すぐに南条先生が手当てをしました。私たちは使用に必須に運び、すぐに南条先生が手当てをしました。私たちは使用に必
彼は間違いなくカノンではありませんでした<笑>そうそうなんです源氏さんの言う通りなんですよ口ではとても説明できない君も同じ意見なのかいはい。ニュースのことを知っていたら、何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。何をしてもいいのか。Regardless of whether we can trust it or not, trust what we saw or not. <laughs> If we gave their claims the benefit of a doubt, it means that Aunt Rose's first conclusion was correct. Cannon had appeared near the back door to the kitchen with a serious injury. Then, he'd been taken to the servant room and cared for. And after that, Something terrifying had happened. So, were these people so convinced that Cannon can, couldn't possibly have done such a thing? If it's、uh, started to suspect whether it has even been Cannon Kun at all? In other words, that means Cannon Kun did appear? No matter how confused they are, no matter how they nod with their words, that's what it means in the end. So, does it mean, that mean that, after all? Cannon couldn't use some trick to escape that ring, even though it wasn't locked. Even though it was locked, rather. <laughs> yes, he escaped the room, even though it wasn't locked. Sheer ability of someone who can do such a thing. <laughs> no, that doesn't matter anymore. The real problem is that Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa san were killed. The real problem is how could he do that if, with red text, he is dead? And it was specifically the past tense that was used. Unless he's been reanimated. Well,、oh. hmm. the real problem is that Dr. Nanja. Yeah, no, I read that already. Aunt Rosa had claimed that Cannon Kun was behind this from the very beginning. No matter how confused these people are, no matter how much they try to deny it, they're halfway confirming that she was right. But even so, for some reason, it felt like their awkwardness couldn't be explained by confusion alone. What did they see? Like I said, did they really see something that couldn't be explained with words? Step by step process, what happened? Aunt Rosa, who decided that further talk wouldn't get us anywhere, concluded her questioning and said she wanted to check the two bodies. That was something I'd been wanting to do too. The witnesses had been unable to figure anything out, but they'd been shaken. If those of us who hadn't been at the scene calmly looked at the corpses, We might find something. Your death? But it was a little surprising to learn that Aunt Rosa was also concerned about the bodies. Even at this point, I still wanted to use any clues I could find to expose the c o r p o r a t i o n of the truth myself. But it should have been different in Aunt Rosa's case. Hasn't Aunt Rosa prioritized staying safe over finding the culprit? That's not her goal. Also, if that was the case, her actions regarding. Uh, the grandfather don't make sense either.、Um, she says she, he's fine by himself, but also doesn't,、um, that he's safe there, but also that、uh, she wants to keep everyone safe and doesn't want to take them up there. It's contradictory. There's so many things that she's been doing which feel contradictory or out of place. I couldn't really see why she would go to all the trouble of leaving our barricade in the parlor just because she wanted to check the bodies. Um. So it was saying that the bodies aren't ready yet. Um. Getting to here. Finishing touches yet to come and that this alone isn't enough. I'm guessing so that the. Um. Picks can be placed in them. Uh. So. The pigs weren't there when. Which is odd.、Um, yeah, the pigs weren't there when they were killed, when the servants of the bodies, and now when they come back there, they will have the pigs in them. And presumably the next、uh, magic circle. 
Um, <laughs> but if those are the causes of death, it doesn't fit with the whole demon ice pick thing where those are the causes. And that's what goes after him and kills him. Too many contradictions. <laughs> みんなで一緒に使用に室に行きます。全員一緒に行動すれば安全よ。マリア、落書き遊びはおしまいになさい。I wonder if she's going to have the magic set already drawn out, maybe. Oh,落書きじゃない! Magic circles? ベアトリーチェの問題を解いているの! Oh? Oh! Is there going to be a letter that wasn't there before? Beatrice's problem? What are you talking about? Tell me about it. Oh, kind of have to, to keep the group together. It seemed that George Anarchy was against the idea of bringing Maria to the bloody crime scene. Well... Wasn't she there with uh, the Jessica and uh, Cannon crime scene? But considering that Maria would be all alone if, I, if left here, it would surely be much safer to take Maria with us. In the end, it was just Anarchy's irresponsible humanism. We decided that all of us, including Maria, would go to the servants' room. The bed in the servant room was stained with bright red blood. No, not just the bed. The whole room was covered with gruesome paint from countless blood stains. That dreadful scene alone was enough to give us an idea of the repulsive sight they'd been trying to describe. Ooh. And there's going to be a circle on the door or on the handle. Maria, Maria, oh. <laughs> Maria, George Anarchy was standing by the entrance, covering Maria's eyes with his back to the room. He probably didn't want a dirty and innocent girl threaten us with the repulsive blood in this room. Well, that was surely the correct decision. I was acting tough right now, so I didn't mind. But for the rest of my life, whenever I see red paint scattered around, I'll probably remember the stream and start to vomit. My retinas have already had the stream burned into them. In other words, it's already too late for me. Right after they entered the servant room, Gorda Sun and Shun and Shun trembled. He shook, wondering what horrible new situation had arisen to make them tremble again. The bodies had gone. Or something. Aunt Rosa also shuddered. Raised her gun high and searched for whatever it was that had made him shudder. But she couldn't find it. Exactly. Look at all this room covered in blood and not a single body to be found? It was only natural. They were trembling because they couldn't find it. Nanda, Nanda. Sounds about right. If they have some means of making the corpses walk, that would make getting transporting them a lot easier. You wouldn't have to drag them off somewhere. You could get them to walk to your destination along with you. That doesn't mean anything. At this point, it really doesn't mean anything because now you've got servants missing and dead. Well, 
Yeah, I guess cannon does count, because uh, his key is accounted for. Is it still accounted for? It's actually a good question. What did fate do with the key that was in Jessica's pocket? Someone definitely could have pocketed it. Um, and potentially pass it on to someone else. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, it could be that a servant um, is collaborating with the killer, who isn't a servant, um, and the servant has an alibi for themselves, um, but they gave the key to the killer to be able to do it. So while the servant themselves has an alibi and isn't the killer, they are aiding the killer, or potentially someone stole it from the servant, and the servant just isn't aware of it yet. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to end it there for today. I hope you all enjoyed. I am very much confused, but I like that. Uh, so yeah, let me know any feedback you have in the comments. And until next time, see ya.